Hello and welcome to another tutorial. So this time we are going to be continuing to extend our painting system. So previously we got things up and running for being able to pick colors, for being able to select brushes, and for being able to draw on canvas. What we're going to be doing this time around is big focus is going to be on setting up support to be able to have things like undo and also to be able to give some improvements of just general quality of life things there for it and give a few additional options of how things are going to work. So let's dive on in. So where we got to last time was we could draw with brushes we could pick different ones, we could pick different colors, and we have all of that up and running. So now I want to be able to have this support, the idea of being able to undo different actions. And this is where sort of a command pattern actually can come in really handy. So what I am going to do for our paintable canvas under the scripts here is I'm going to create another folder that I'll just call commands. So what we'll have is each type of action that we need to record and track, we'll have that as a command. So drawing will be a command. We'll make selecting a color, selecting a brush, things like that are also commands. That way then, if we need to actually undo something, well, for simple things, we can potentially just roll back to you know, a previous brush, previous color. For more complex things, we might need to actually essentially replay all of the commands that have already been run. So this is going to let us do that a lot easier. So I'm going to create a script here for base painting command. And then we'll have our specific ones for painting command, set brush. We'll also have ones for painting command and set color. And then finally, We'll have a painting command for draw. Now I could roll the brush and color information into the drawer, but then that would mean all I can undo is drawing operations. And you, know, you could have gotten the exact specific color and you want to potentially go right back to that. So being able to undo all of the commands, I think is actually going to work better for us. So we've got our sort of setup here. We can get rid of a lot of these UI panels. Uh, what I'm going to do though is open up all of these commands. And initially, we're just going to get these working for being uh, stored. So these all come off of base painting command. We'll get rid of the start and update because they will not be needed for these. So we're just cleaning up the structure for it first. And then what I'll do is I'll follow my usual approach of I will implement the logic of how I want these to work first, and then we'll get the actual implementations of them going. So, okay, we've thinned those out. So now we want to get this going. So, okay, select brush, set color, these are some good entry points for where we can start to connect some of these things up. So, okay, let's have it that I think what we do for this is, okay, let's go for append command and we'll go for a new painting command set brush in brush. So that's good. 
So something we may want to consider is that the very first time we set a brush or set a color, that we probably don't want to allow that to be undone. So having some capability within our command system to indicate this command can be undone or not. So I want to make that supported. So I want to support that as a parameter that gets provided here. So what I'm going to do is, so active brush is an object. It's going to be nullable. Color though, the problem with color is that it's a struct. So I want these to kind of, they don't have to work in the exact same way, but I'd kind of like them to be able to work in the exact same way. So I'm going to make that in color and I'm going to make this set color. And what I'm going to do up here, so base brush being an object is already able to become null, active color can't be, but if I put the question mark there, then that makes it nullable. So what I can now do is, okay, here, if the active brush is not equal to null, then it can be undone. So essentially what this will do is if false is passed in, we want it to be uh, not able to be undone. If true is passed in, we want it to be able to be undone. So the only time active brush not equal to null will be false will be at the very beginning. Now with color, we can do a similar thing here of active color not equal to null. So that's good. So we know we're going to then also have a append command function. And it's going to take in a base painting command. Like that. So we know also the structure for these two ones. So, okay. For this, we would have a public one color in color and a is undoable, which we would default to true. So by default, everything should be undoable. That's, I think, the most logical uh, setup for it. So this is something that should also be on our actual base command. So public base painting command, give it that. And we will have a public bool is undoable. That is gettable, but only privately settable. Default that to true. That's good. Uh, I'm just trying to remember what coding convention I was following with working with bulls. Actually, I haven't been needing to use bulls, so we'll stick with this for now. So, okay, that's good. Uh, our set color one here, rename that just so that it's consistent. Do a similar thing with the color. Actually, the color here, I think I'm going to go for it just being uh, color set or color two set. Uh, the reason being is I don't think in general, I want other things to be able to see information on these commands. So I'm happy with that, uh, but I will have this run the base constructor with that. So that's good. I'll do a similar thing with the set brush one. So this of a brush to set. Then have our same logic here. Uh, 
So we're just keeping track of all these little bits and pieces. That's good. So, okay. So far, so good. We haven't got any of the particular logic happening with it yet. That's okay. So, okay. Those things, the other ones will be undoable, which is good. Let's look at other things, though, that are sort of happening here. And there might be some other commands that we want to add in. For example, here we're clearing to the default color. That would actually be probably a good thing to have as a separate command. So I'm also going to create a painting command. Clear to color. And we'll do a similar thing with that. Base painting command. Difference with this is that I already have a pretty good sense of what I want this to actually uh, look like, so I can just go straight to implementing it, and then I will add in the code hooks for it. So color, color to clear to. We have same sort of logic that we're using for all of these other ones. And again, R is doable. Again, defaulting to true. And again, running our base one. So we can start to really actually have quite a lot of control over this with having these commands. Uh, so I previously have used this kind of approach for doing something where I in VR actually painted various sort of pieces. And then the reason I did it that way and with, with these commands was it allowed me to have it that when you walked up to them, what you saw was not just the final piece, but you could actually see it being painted. You could watch the brush strokes sort of happening. Because uh, I really, you know, that sort of, I think, worked a lot more effectively for it. Uh, and visually, it also looked really cool. So I think it worked effectively and it looked cool. Uh, so this, uh, we need to fix that. So that's good. Just wanna make sure we don't have any compile errors. Good. Okay, so here I'll do the same thing with doing the clear. So we'll append a command, and in this case, the command that we'll append is a new painting command, clear to color, canvas default color, and it is not undoable. So that's good. I will also slightly change around the order of these things uh, because this portion here of this filling, that is actually going to end up being handled by that command. So we just want to make sure we haven't broken anything so far. Uh, everything there is still working, so that's good. Now, let's get the final command in. So the drawing one, what I would do for that is where we have this perform drawing with. So there's different bits of information that I could sort of store with this. So I could tell it to, you know, store a draw command and I could give it the actual pixel locations that I calculate down here. Or I could use these UV coordinates. Now the advantage of the UV coordinates is that if I rescale the canvas, the drawing will just rescale with it as long as I preserve the fact that the UVs for the canvas go from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So I'm actually going to use that approach with this. 
uh, where what I will say is I will append a command. This will be a new painting command draw. And I want to provide these texture coordinates. Now, this is where I think it gets interesting because, so, okay, I'm appending a painting command, but if I was doing this, then that means every you know, update, essentially, where it's going and you know, performing this drawing, it would be adding in a new one of these commands. And that would mean while I'm holding the mouse down, it's continuing to add ones. And that's not how we normally expect drawing programs to work. If I hold the mouse button down and keep dragging and then undo, I expect that whole thing to undo. So I think that's something where we want it to work like of that, because otherwise I feel like it's going to, you know, it's not, a, not intuitive to people for how it's going to work. So we want to start being a little bit more clever about this. So I'm going to come back to this. I will initially set up here. So we have our public painting command drawer and that we provide a vector to uh, and UV coordinates, I think are probably still accurate. Uh, UV. And this one, I will not have the uh, input come in as far as whether it's undoable or not, because this should always be undoable. Now, strictly, I don't want, I don't need to pass in true here because it is the default. But the reason I'm doing this is because it makes it very explicit that yes, these are always undoable. And I would actually put that in as a comment typically. So there are times where I will write code that is technically redundant, but because it improves the clarity of what's happening. Uh, and I think that can be really handy. So, okay. We want to look at how we start working with this. So what I'm going to initially do is I'm going to have a list of base painting command. And this is our command stack. And I will actually bring this up to the top here. I'll actually put it there. I will also have a thing where we can go base painting command, last command, or I think most recent command. And that is pretty gonna like pretty straightforward in terms of what it actually will be. We can just do that will give us the last command. Now, because we have ensured that some of these ones are not undoable, this will always actually give us back something. So what I want to be able to do here is with the drawing, if the most recent command is a painting command drawer, then I want to look at extending that command if possible, because that could be really useful. Now, it might not always be valid to extend the command. So I'm going to have a, that we actually have a function here. And we'll go for public virtual bool can extend. And I think true should be the, uh, actually should true be the default. I'm actually going to say that false should be the default and draw will have to specifically say that it is able to be extended. So, okay. 
if the most recent command is a draw one, and I might also actually just check here. Now, because this is a quick thing to check, if most recent command can extend and it's a draw command. Which actually, so looking at this logic now, I actually think because everything else is going to return false, I can remove this part of the check and I'll just specifically check if it can be extended. And if it can, then I would go most recent command, extend, and we give it that texture coordinate. Otherwise, we will do the append. And then if I go over to a draw one, so this is something where the extend is going to be very specific to the particular type. So this would have a public void extend vector two in UV. Now, what I would then also do is over in a paintable canvas, we can get rid of base brush. Uh, this, I need to actually convert it to a painting command draw. As painting command draw, like that. Now, because that's sort of looking a little complicated, I will put it inside braces just to make it a little bit clearer. Uh, I could also, looking at this, that could come back as null if I messed up with this. So actually, in hindsight, I am going to bring this check back. I, you know, am of two minds about it, but I think in this case, it's the correct option and it's the safest option. I could allow it to error and then that would flag the file that's a problem. I could put in a particular detection for it. This is the option that feels most correct to me in this particular scenario, but we could do it a range of different ways. So, okay. We've sorted out adding in those commands. And if I made our list here, a serialize field, and let's just go and that might be, actually we'd probably need to do system.serializable for this. We just want to see, okay, does that stack, you know, we can see the zero things in it. And we're still seeing zero things there. That is because if we take a look, we are not adding anything into that yet. So our command stack, add, and the command is there. Now these commands at the moment aren't actually doing anything. They're not doing any of the drawing. We're just keeping track of, okay, are things going in there? And what I would see, so we definitely have something going wrong there because we, as we're drawing, it was adding in heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of commands. And that's because this should have a public override of can extend and we return for now true. So, okay, that's good. So now we can see I'm still holding the mouse down, hasn't added in any more commands. Each time 
it's still able to extend it, but if I change the color, then that's in as a separate thing. So, okay, that's looking good. That's how we would want that to be working. Uh, I can turn this back off of being serializable. Uh, we don't want any of that actually getting shown. So what I want to do now is have it that the drawing and all of these actual actions go through these commands. So we'll start with things like this selecting of the brush and so forth. So I want to have it that when we append it, it also executes it. So in terms of how we go about doing the execution of it, there is a lot of different ways of how we could go about it. And it really depends upon how much we want to you know, sort of open up the systems to be able to be externally modified. So I'm going to though have most of it be driven from within the paintable canvas. That is lessening a little bit the usage of the command pattern. It is sort of taking some of that away from the commands themselves, uh, which is not great, but I think it's a little bit sort of safer and keeps things more strictly partitioned, which I, I think is more what I prefer to go for with this. So F in command is, well, let's check for clear to color. So we can dispatch essentially based upon the different types of ones here. So, okay, if it's a clear to color one, then what do we want to do? So we know that the actual logic here is this. This is the actual part that does the clearing to a particular color. So, okay. Somehow we want to execute that logic. So different ways we could go about this. We could set up a specific function and we could have per each command type, a set of functions that actually essentially perform the execution of that. Uh, we could have it that you know, we give this direct access to our you know, canvas is another option. So there's different ways we could go about doing this. Uh, I'm going to potentially for this illustrate a few different ways. So if we go for this, so in command as painting command clear to color, we could then have a apply function or maybe an execute function. And we could give it canvas dimensions. So we could give it the actual uh, paintable texture itself, canvas width, and the canvas height. So we could do something like that. So I'll actually illustrate a few different ways of how we could approach this, because which way you approach it is, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages to each one, but a lot of it comes down to sort of the style that you're wanting to go for with it. So execute. This gets in a texture 2D. Uh, then I believe we get a in the in width. Like that. So, okay, we already have our color to clear to. We have our height. So these change around slightly. Color to clear to. And our texture. That's good. So that illustrates one approach for it that we pass in the necessary data and it modifies it. That could be good for commands where it's quite lengthy what it needs to do. 
let's look at a couple of other commands. We've got our brush selection and our color ones here as well. So those ones could follow a fairly similar approach. Because either way, we need to be passing information to it. Uh, so they could do something like of this, so like set color, could go in command as painting command set color, and that could go execute. And maybe what has to happen is it passes in that active color by ref. So that's an option. Let's see how that would actually look. So we'd have a public void execute, and we would have color, and we would go ref to modify. So that would be in color to modify is color to set. Now we'll see how that goes with us using nullable types. So that does have a little bit of an issue with it being a nullable type. And I think this is, this is something I haven't tried to previously do with a nullable type. My gut feel is probably the right way to go about this is making that nullable like that. We'll see how that goes. It might go very poorly. Uh, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, even better. Uh, but let's get our brush setting going. And this, we would do the same thing of we pass in the active brush. Now, this one is not uh, one that is needing to be nullable, so that makes it a little bit easier. That one will just work exactly as is. So we'd have public void execute. So I've intentionally not set any execute function up on the base command, simply because the structure of these is so different in the individual types that it's actually one that it's not really meaningful making it a virtual one in my opinion. So we again have a uh, out brush to set. Uh, out brush. And just to be consistent, that should actually be out color. Yes, I'm following my own actual structure and naming conventions consistently. So, okay, we've made brush selection and color selection only go through these. The clearing of a color has now only gone through this. So that's good. Now with this, we are starting to sort of see, okay, append straightforward, but it would actually be very easy for us to have and likely something that will end up coming in handy of an execute command. And actually all that is happening here is just that execute logic. This will just make our lives easier splitting up uh, that appending and the execution. So that's good. So, okay, those different ones, and we can test and make sure that, okay, is that working so far? So that seems to be working as before. Change colors, all of that is still working. So, okay, that's good. We have those different commands going. Now the append and extending commands is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Uh, because executing the command, okay, if it's a painting command, then when it appends, that, yep, 
Sure, that makes sense. Uh, but if it's been extended, that makes it a little bit trickier. So if it's a drawer, there's a lot more involved in the drawing. There's additional stuff that it's accessing in terms of, you know, it's getting a lot of scaling things with the brushes. Now, those are things that we could uh, store on the actual, you know, when we set the brush, stuff like of that. But there's a lot of things that we're doing here. And this is actually one where I think what I would do is I would actually set this up as a sort of standalone uh, function that can be run is I think how I would actually go about approaching this. So I am going to have, I might actually move the append above this and I'll create a execute command internal just for more complicated ones where it makes sense to keep it within the canvas. Uh, so this will be execute command internal draw. And I think this entire set of logic here for the perform drawing with. It's largely what I'm going to be using. For now, I'm going to minimize that because uh, what I want to do here is in command, oops, then I'm going to need to do something with that. And that should be an is. So the challenge with this is there's two quite different ways we need to work with this. One is where it's extended it, and the other is where it's just done that append uh, and of an entirely new one. So that does make it a little bit trickier in terms of what we actually do, because this needs to do some slightly different logic. So what I think I would do for this is we want both to be able to handle the same thing. So I think execute command internal drawer. I think I want to provide that most recent command. And I think this is going to be the way to approach doing this is we pass it, it and we tell it whether it's just drawing all of it or whether it's drawing just the last point. Because most of the time, it's just going to be drawing the last point. So I think what that would end up looking like is we'll say execute command internal and the drawer. And we've already added in the extend there because we're doing this in quite a few uh, ones. What I will actually do is have a uh, painting command, which I'll call it drawing command. So draw command. that. Now, likely it would get optimized out, but just again for clarity. So I think that works. This uh, execute command internal drawer, draw command, this will do the exact same thing. Good. Now, I did say that I wanted to be able to pass in indicating whether it's just the very end of it uh, or whether it's an ex whether it's been something that's been extended. So I think I will pass in true here and then down here, say bool in is extension, which by default is false. So if it's an extension, we'll rely on the command to be able to tell us uh, what sort of final parts to draw. If it's not an extension, then we'll go and be able to use um, the sort of fuller section of it. So, okay. 
Now we need to figure out what this has to actually do. And this does require a bit of a different approach because we've got this perform drawing with, and I'm going to actually get rid of the call to that. So at the moment, nothing will draw because I want to look at this and how I can potentially restructure it to work how I would like. So things like the active brush and active color, those are things that we have those already as variables in this. So they're already properties on the paintable canvas. So that color there is, I think that's active color value. So we do already have a bunch of these things. So what I think I will do is I'm actually going to take all of this function and I'm going to get rid of the outer part of it, but I'm going to bring the internals of it down here and I want to use this as essentially a lambda function. So what I want to be able to say is, okay, well, in draw command, and then execute, and I want to be able to pass in if it's an extension, because it will, I want it to figure out what it needs to do there itself. So is it an extension? And if it is an extension, then I want to give it a set of logic to actually run. So we can give it a set of code. And this is going to be the code here. The actual apply will do afterwards. So what we're essentially doing is we're giving our drawing function, a interface here to be able to say, cool, here's the location. So vector two in location. Like that. So then it's up to the draw command to provide those locations and to drive this logic. So what our execute then would look like here is we would have a public void execute tool if it's an extension. And then we're providing a system dot action because it's not actually um, outputting anything. So it's not returning anything. It's just a void function. So a system action is kind of the ideal one uh, that provides a vector two. And this is the drawing function. So we can go back here and that looks happy. So, okay good so far. Now let's do this the easy way for now. I do want to make some changes and improvements to this, uh, but let's start this off simple. Points add UV and then in UV add, oops, points to add. So that's good. Don't know why I've decided to put a vector two in there. Totally not necessary. Uh, so this, if it's an, not an extension, it's very easy. It just draws everything. So if it was not an extension, then all we would do is for each uh, location in points, and we would go in drawing function location. So straightforward. But if it's something where it's extended it, we only want to draw that last section. So, okay, 
what we would do in that scenario, which for remember, it being an extension is actually going to be the most common case. So I will actually make it the one that we handle first. And for that, I would just do in drawing function. And we could go points. And we just give it the last one. So that should work. Let's test that out then and see, does drawing still work? So it does, we can still draw. Everything is still working okay. So that's great. That means we've got all of the bits that we've stored for the drawing working. What we can do now is we can actually set up our UI for being able to undo. So I'm going to add a panel here for controls. So I'll call that uh, UI canvas controls. And we'll just align that down the bottom of the screen. Let's always adjust the settings a little bit. Probably that is way too high. 50, maybe a little bit higher than that. That's good. And we'll offset it. Actually, no, I'll leave it down the very bottom. Uh, but I will bring it in so that it's not taking up the whole of the space. Probably more like 500. That's better. Uh, and we'll adjust the tinting so that it matches all the others. So, okay, in terms of controls, let's add in a button and we'll just refer to this as undo. Update the text on it as well. And I'm just going to give this a uh, grid layout group. We'll reduce the sizes of these. So I did go for 75, so we'll go for 65 in height. And I think 100's okay in the width. Uh, start corner, it's fine. Child alignment in the middle center. And that looks good. So, okay, we want to then link these up to actually be able to tell our, can our paintable canvas to undo things. So I am going to set up a function here, public void undo last command. And that's all it needs. Now, it could be useful to also set up support for redoing. It starts to make it a bit more complicated, but let's look at actually supporting that. Hadn't originally planned to, but why not? Uh, so we'll set up also the redo button and update its text as well. Give those a little bit more spacing, a bit better. So, okay, what I will do is link these up to our canvas. So those will talk to the paintable canvas. And this is our undo button. So that's going to do undo last command. And then we'll also link up redo. That's good. So, okay. Let's think then about, and make sure I save that. So let's think about how these need to work. So first thing we need to check is, can the command be actually undone? So F, most recent command, and if it is not undoable, I'm just going to return. 
because there are some cases where at the very beginning in particular, we won't have been able to actually undo it, and that's okay. Now, if we can undo it, what I'm going to do is I need to check sort of the type of it because how it behaves when we undo it is actually going to be pretty important because some things like setting a brush color, I could go back in the history and find whatever we last set the brush color to and use that. If it's something where it's a drawing command, I actually need to go back and I need to remove that and then I need to re-execute the full stack of commands. So it's pretty impactful of how what the actual undo behavior needs to uh, cause. So I'm actually going to set up public enum e undo behavior. So for now, I'll have the options be find last and uh, redraw command list. Actually, rather than redraw command list, uh, replay command list, I think is a better term for it. So, okay, we'll have a public undo behavior. So again, the default I think for this should be that it finds the last command of this matching type. I think drawing is the exception where what it would do is use a completely different approach there for it. Uh, so we will, won't actually provide it as being a parameter there. I think this is one where what I would do is undo behavior and it has to replay the command list. So now, okay, let's check what the behavior is. So if undo, so if the, sorry, we need to check them. If the most recent command and it's undo behavior. Well, if it's replay command list, that's actually the easiest one for us to handle because what I do is I take a command stack and I remove, and I remove the one at command stack count minus one. And then rather than having to, you know, I could go through and execute every single command, but there might be other cases where we need to replay it. So I'm going to have a replay all commands. That will just do a for each. And this is why we split out the execute from the append is so that I can just do that. So that's good because here it removes it and it will replay all the commands. Now, otherwise, if the behavior is that find last, then that changes what we need to do. So I might also store here removed command. And that will be whatever the most recent command was. And then actually just do that. So we remove it right at the very beginning. So then what I need to do for this is I need to find the last instance in the stack that matches this type. So I would go and say for Int index, and that index is going to be our command stack count minus one. So we're doing the whole reversing through process. We grab out the command. So what I want to check is if command, if its type is equal to the removed commands type, if it is, 
then I execute that particular command. So what I'll do is it'll go back and find the last time we changed the color and we re-execute that so the color is correct. So that looks good. And what I would then also do is I would do a return. So we've found one of the matching type, we execute it, we exit out. Now I haven't supported doing a redo yet. That's intentional because redo is a lot more complicated. Uh, now UI and things like of that also will get out of sync in this case. So that's an additional problem where I need to sync those things back up. So at the moment, if I pick a color, it sends through a command that gets added to the stack. So if I use the, ex the same sort of existing interfaces we've got for setting a color, that's going to result in an infinite loop of it continuing to add commands. So that's not great. So I am going to need a couple of other sort of interfaces for this. Uh, so what I will do is a few different things. For one thing, I am going to go to things like of our color picker and we'll take the actual main UI here for this. So this has the events for when a color's changed and this is the one that uh, those get linked to the paintable canvases set color. I am going to have it that uh, set new color here which I don't believe anything is calling. We've got no references. I'm going to have all in no notify, or actually just in allow notifications, which by default will be true. But if we're not actually you know, allowing notifications, then I want to pass that through so that we can actually handle that because our color updated function here. So that's going and doing all of the invoking. So what I will have is for allowing the notifications by default, it will send them. But what I can do is if notifications are allowed, then we send that on color changed event. Otherwise, it won't go and do it. So the UI, everything like that will update. Color wheel will properly be synced. We just have avoided it going and you know, messing with it, which is important. So, okay, that's good for the color wheel. And we want to have similar for the brush picker. It needs to be able to do the exact same thing. Now, it doesn't have an external thing for setting a brush yet. So we will have a public void set new brush, base brush. And we'll do, we'll follow the exact same sort of syntax here for allowing notifications and we'll follow the same rules of by default, it does send. So this will go for on brush selected internal and go for in brush. Now we're not doing anything with the notifications here yet. So the reason for that is what I'm going to do. Let's just hook this up like that. Now, hopefully this doesn't break anything, but we'll find out. The one thing I do want to make sure is, and actually, cause it's got the, so the thing that it's running into here, reason it's grumpy is because we've got that listener, which is expecting a very particular type. The individual UI elements shouldn't have to care about whether we're allowing notifications or not. So I think that would be overkill. Uh, so what I will actually do 
is with this have a on brush selected by UI or in UI or on brush selected with UI actually is probably a better term for it. So that can be the other interface that we have here that still has the same thing of providing the brush in. But the difference is, is that it always allows the notifications. So this one, we get the choice of whether that sends notifications. This one, we don't get the choice. So, okay, we've modified our pickers for color and brushes to be able to handle these things coming in. What I need to then do is I need some logic here with our paintable canvas. And I'm going to have a serialize field. Now we don't have Unity events in. So we'll bring in Unity engine.events because I want this to be able to talk to those uh, commands, those color wheels and everything. So I'll have a unity event and this is a color and a bool on sync UI uh, with canvas color. And we'll do a similar thing for the brush. So unity event, we have our base brush, another bool, and on sync UI with brush. So what that means is we can hook those up on our paintable canvas. So our sync with color goes to the color picker. And we have the set new color function. And the other one goes to the brush picker. So that's good. So we've got those elements connected. And then what we can do when we go and you know, execute these particular commands is we can actually go and restore them. So this execute command so this I'm going to then say, okay, well, our on sync UI with canvas color, invoke active color, and we don't send notifications. It's the active color value. We do the same thing with the brush. Sync UI brush, and we invoke that, and with the active brush, and again, we turn off notifications. Now, we could make it that it is only doing this when it's an actual undo, because that I think would be quite useful. I think actually it applies if it's an undo or a replay. In most cases, we don't want to do it because that'll allow us to only run things when it actually needs to, uh, which I think is good. So, okay, so far so good with that, I think. Probably one last little bit we need to update, uh, which is we only run these if they are not an undo or replay. Actually, no, sorry, it's the other way around. We only run these if they are an undo or replay. So we're just not doing extra logic. It's a little bit of, you know, extra shuffling around of data, but it's an extra shuffling around that means we don't need to go and uh, do extra UI work that we don't need to. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to select progressively between these different brushes. 
and that should mean I have a stack of commands there now. So if I go and draw at the moment, I can see that appears. Now if I undo that, the canvas clears. If I undo again, it's changed brush. Undo again. So it's stepping back through, and let's make sure it's actually worked. And it has, so that's good. But what if I've gone and done a bunch of things like this? I've queued up a bunch of commands. I've drawn. I then undo that. And undo again. And then draw. And then undo. So you, you can't undo and undo at the moment, which I think that's okay. But we were going to make redo work, and this is actually where there's a little bit of complexity that sort of happens. So redo is doable, but involves a little bit of work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a, another list, and I'll end up moving this up to the top in a moment, uh, but this is our redo list. And that's just a new list. So we've got our redo list, and what we'll do is we will add our removed command to the end of it. So the way it needs to then work when we go and process this is a little bit interesting. So there's a couple of things. If we've got a redo list, and we then go and actually try to append a command, that redo list should be emptied. The reason for that is we have gone and changed the conditions. It's, you know, we're not setting up an undo system that allows you to selectively insert things. And this is sort of the behavior people would typically expect. If you undo and then draw something or do take an action before you've done a redo, it should clear all of those redo ones. Uh, so we're just keeping consistency with that behavior. So, okay, now redo is actually a little bit easier because, well, firstly, if the redo list count is zero, we do nothing. Pretty straightforward. And then what we would actually do is the command to redo is redo list and we grab the one at the very end. Now redo list, I technically could get away with using a stack for it, the command stack, because I want to be able to uh, directly access them easily, not as good an option, but we could use a stack for this. Uh, not a huge advantage necessarily at this point to doing that. So I'm keeping it simple for now until I'm happy with how it's working. So the command to redo, all we would then do is we execute that command and it is an undo or replay, which means we do send the UI events through for that. And we then add it back into the command stack. We also remove it from the redo list. Remove at and the last one. Now the reason I do largely identical logic to what's here in append command, uh, but do it slightly differently is because pen command, I want it to specifically clear that list. That's the main reason for it. Uh, I could do a check here of passing in a Boolean, but I'm already having to do, you know, a lot of fairly similar logic here. It's not really much of a gain from doing that, I don't think. Uh, and this is a very specific and only case where I would be doing the append, whereas things like the execute command, I'm running that from a lot of different locations. So that's good. That should mean that we have redo working. Now I'm going to take this up to here. Like that. 
let's test out that redo works. So we'll go through, select the different brushes again. We undo. And so what should be happening is the list for redoing is getting further and further populated. Then if I go and redo, that's working. Now what if I undid at this point? So I undo and redo. So it's working the way that we would expect it to, which is good. But if I go and do any drawing, then the redo list doesn't work. If I do some color selection, because we haven't tested that the color selection actually works nicely. So let's undo. And we're not seeing the color side update. So that's something that's important. We can see that's the color we're drawing at the moment. We've selected green, that's working. We select blue. Now if I undo and then draw, it is the correct color, but the color wheel is actually not showing the correct uh, particular color there. So that means that we have uh, something not working here in terms of our you know, changing of the colors. So this should be getting run. We can double check and make sure that that's actually happening. Now it'll get run a couple of times, so I might actually turn off that breakpoint for now. And then just do a little bit of drawing. We'll pick one color, so green, and then blue, and then red. And then if I put a breakpoint here, and then go and do undo, it does correctly come in here and say, okay, color's been updated. And if we look at the call stack, it did get a new color come in and we can check and make sure, okay, it did execute the command. So this might also be one where we wanna check that it did properly go and update that. So this should be going and updating the color. So, okay, that side ran. Let's try and do an undo again. So we've got the active color. And if we take a look actually at our stack of commands is probably a good thing to take a look at. So our command stack, we've got a few different ones here. We've got a set color, another set color here. Those all look correct. Those all look like the right values. And our active color, we can see what the RGBA values are there. So it's like 0 0.253, 0 0.24910. You can see those do change. And it does go and tell it, okay, here are the new values. So it is correctly going and telling it, yep, here's new ones to set. Uh, and if we come here and see what's happening, what we can see is this color updated is assuming that the hue and everything else has actually been changed. That's not the case. So what I need to do is color RGB to HSV of our current color and then out current hue, current saturation and value. That should do the trick. So let's test that out. So it's actually been something that's been a bug for a while. We just haven't ever run that function so we've never been able to see it. So set a few different colors there. If I go and undo, it's now back to correctly working. So that's great. We've got the ability to undo. We've got the ability to redo. Uh, the other thing that I could do 
is I could, and this would just be a handy thing, is it would be nice to be able to indicate if undo and redo are actually available. So serialize field, a unity event, we'll make it provide a bool. And what I could do is have this be on sync undo available. Do a similar thing for redo. So at the very beginning, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, so what I would do is when we go to uh, append a command, well, first thing I would do there is on sync redo available. It's no longer available. So what I would do here is on sync undo available. And we invoke it with if the most recent command and if it is undoable. If the most recent one is not undoable, straightforward. Now, because we can add things back into the command stack here, I need to do that. The other thing I would need to do is on sync redo available. And it's only available if the redo list dot count is greater than zero. So, okay, so far so good. With undo here, this also goes and changes the state of these. So redo would always be available, so I can change that just to true, uh, but we should update the state of these. So, okay, we've got two functions that will be coming out setting booleans. So let's see if we can just easily link those up. So on sync undo available, we'll link that up to the undo object. And then we could go to game object and we could tie that into set active. Could do the exact same thing for redo. And again, game object set active. If you wanted it to still be there, you could also tie it into something where it's actually turning it off or on. So under the button, we do have interactable. So we could use either one, might actually change them to both be using interactable. So, okay. Uh, and we need to make sure it's using the dynamic one. So, so I'll actually change the undo one to be the same that we use the interactable. So let's test that out. So at the moment, can't actually change anything there. So that's good. As soon as I go and draw, then I can select some brushes. As soon as I undo, then redo becomes available. If I do a redo, so that's good. So if we test this out, let's pick a bunch of colors and we'll do a bit of drawing with them. So I'll draw with a few different colors. And let's go for blue. Also change to a different brush. Now, what we'll notice if we then go and undo and in particular undo one of those large drawing commands. It takes quite a bit. So it actually pauses uh, for a bit because to replay those commands that are already been run, it actually is having to go. And if we take a look, it's redoing this applying of the texture. It's also the way that we're having to do this of processing. Uh, the pixel and everything, doing that blending. There's a lot of operations that we're having to do there, and that's going to make it take a lot longer than we want it to.
So there are ways that we can optimize this. There's a lot of operations that we're doing here of getting and setting pixels uh, that we can actually significantly improve the performance of them as well as stuff like this apply. So there's a lot of improvements that we can actually make there. I'm not going to look at those in this video. Those will be looked at in the next part. Uh, but dive on in and experiment with this. See what kinds of things you, know, you might want to add to it. You could try and do things like, okay, showing an actual list of the commands that have been run in the UI. So people can see that there. They might want to dynamically then eliminate something from the undo stack. You could do that as well. Uh, but experiment with it. See what you can do. Thanks, folks. Hope you found the video interesting and helpful. If you have, chuck in a like and subscribe. It really helps out. It's really appreciated. If there are other bits of sort of features and functionality you'd like to see in this or other questions that you've got, chuck those in a comment below. Uh, if you are looking for the code for the project, the code is available up on GitHub. You can use it in any of your own projects, commercial or non-commercial ones. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, then I do have a Patreon and there is a link to that in the description below. But until next time, bye.